praise the Lord. Welcome to our Thursday morning devotion as we continue with our monthly theme of prayer. Just to remind you, it is a new day, a new beginning. You may not have been praying, you may not have been fasting in this Lenten season, but you can choose today to start praying. You can choose to today to start fasting. It is not too late. You just need to make a choice that I want to have a relationship with God. I want to go deeper, grow deeper in faith in Him, to learn Him more, to speak to Him more, to pray more, and to ask the things that we ought to ask from Him. Remember, prayer is about talking with God. You may be feeling that you are far away from Him. He is calling us that we may come closer and we reason. By reasoning is to speak to Him. Just tell Him what you need and He will tell you and guide you. Just acknowledge Him as your Father. Acknowledge Him as your Creator. Acknowledge Him because you know that He created you. We are all created by God and it is His desire that we may have a communication with Him, a communion with Him, a relationship with Him. We are continuing with this theme of prayer. And yesterday we were looking at why we ought to pray. And we saw that God expects us that we go before Him and pray. Though He knows everything, though He knows the end before the beginning, though He knows about what we need, He knows our needs, He knows our wants. But when we pray, we acknowledge His power and authority. We acknowledge His all-knowing character. We acknowledge that He is of not the same level of us, but we are dependent on him. We also show that we trust him, that he is the giver of everything. We can trust him with our issues. We can trust him with our situations. We can trust him with our circumstances. We can trust him with our lives because we know we cannot without him. Let us grow a culture of praying or talking to God or loving to have a communion with him in prayer. We also saw that it is in prayer that God transforms our hearts. When we pray, when we are talking to him, then we'll hear his voice and he will change our hearts and our hearts will desire to do God's will. We continue with this theme today. And Jesus Christ, when he was here on earth, he loved to pray. He would pray early in the morning. He would pray late in the evening. He would pray when he wanted to make a decision. He would pray asking for direction. We see Jesus Christ fasting and praying before he started his ministry. Before he even chose the disciples, he had to pray. Maybe just asking for guidance and direction from the Father. And he lived with the disciples. And every day they would see Jesus Christ praying. And they would look and maybe desire that they would pray like him. And one day, the disciples ask Jesus that they may teach that he may teach them how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And have we ever asked God, have we ever asked Jesus to teach us how to pray? It is good to say that as we speak to God, we also need to know how should we approach him? How should we speak to him? We know we have learned about communication skills. We know when we are going to interviews, the things we ought to say how we ought to present ourselves, the things we might need to, to ask or even say to the panel. When we are going to different people, we always practice, we always meditate, we always think of how we will communicate. We are taught on how to go and address different people depending on their titles, depending on the things they do, depending on the things you want from them. The same way the disciples ask Jesus, teach us, how to pray. Teach us how to talk with God. Teach us how we can communicate with your Father. Teach us how we can have a conversation with God. Have we ever desired to learn how to speak to God? Because the truth is, there is a way we ought to speak to God. And Jesus Christ taught them how to pray. And he gave them a model on how we ought to pray. Not to exactly how we ought to pray in all prayers, but a model on how we should pray. And he's telling them that we need first to adore God. We ought to adore God. We ought to thank God. He continues to say that we ought to repent of our sins. We ought to take our petitions and our requests to him. And finally, we ought to yield to his will. All this was a model to help us to know how to pray. 
Now, when we come before God in prayer, it is good to pray in the right way. To pray knowing that we are speaking to God, knowing that we are speaking to our Father. When we read Proverbs 28 verse 9, we see that our prayers, that there are prayers we can pray which can become an abomination before God. How are our prayers? We see that we can pray and spend a lot of time in prayer, but those prayers end up to be in vain, that they will not yield anything at all. And that's why in the book of James, he tells us that some of you pray, but you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives. You, not, you don't pray in the right way. Have we, have we desired to learn, to be taught how to pray? King David in Psalm 100, 109 verse 7, he says that it is possible that one's prayer may be a sin before God. When we go before God with a lot of complaining and maybe not addressing him the way we ought to, asking for things that we ought not to ask, going before God, complaining and arguing and grumbling before God, that is not a prayer. But we need to know how do we go before God. Yes, he is our God. Yes, we ought to pray. But how do we go before God? And that's why the disciples desired that, Lord, we have been seeing you. When you pray, when you give thanks, you do miracles. When you pray, you do many things. Miracles happen. You've been able to overcome temptations. We need to pray. Yes, teach us how to pray. And it all starts with our relationship with God. We cannot pray to God if we do not know him. We cannot pray to God if we don't have a relationship with his son. It always starts with us realizing that we are God's creation. Then, after knowing that we are God's creation, then we should know that for a prayer to be effective, God should be the center of that prayer. It is about him and not about us. In, in the book of Luke chapter 11, we see Jesus Christ teaching them, asking them that this is how we ought to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. It starts by acknowledging God as the Father. It starts by focusing on God, that our prayers should be God-centered. It is not about us, it is about him. It is about his creation. It is about his will. It is about his desire. It is about going before him and asking him, knowing that he is our father and acknowledging his power, that our prayers should be focused more on God, on God than ourselves. We ought to go before him knowing that he is our father. He is our creator. All power, all authority belongs to him. That's why this week we are adoring him for who he is. When we go before him, we ought to look at what we say, the things we say to him, because when we realize that he is not of the same level like us, then we should be revered, we should revere him, we should fear him, we should know what to say. We start by thanking him. Jesus Christ teaches, teaches us that we should thank God for who he is. Thank him because he is a healer, although you may be going through a sickness. Thank him that he is our provider, although you may be struggling in your life. Thank him because he is the giver of life, because you are alive today. Thank him for what he has done. Go deeper and tell him what he has done in your life. Count your blessings. Count them one by one. Let him know that you acknowledge his power. You acknowledge his authority upon your life. Submit to him, knowing that everything you have done, everything you have achieved, everything that you have, you have gotten them from him. He has provided for, him, for, for you. You cannot without him. Then you go ahead and make your requests. These requests should be according to his will. As we make the request, he says, yes, ask anything in his name, then he will give unto you. When we ask in his name, Jesus Christ is teaching us that if you ask by my name, then it means one, you know me, you have a relationship with me, 
you know what I desire. And what I desire is what you ought to desire. You should desire heavenly things. You should desire to submit to God's will. You should desire that you know, yes, these are the things you need. But ask God if it is your will, then grant them to me. When we ask in his name, we know that we acknowledge him, that everything we ask should be in line and according to God's will. Then we go ahead and yield to his will that, yes, this is our desires. Yes, this is what we need. These are our petitions. These are our requests. But God, in all this, may your will be done. When we pray, Jesus Christ taught us that you can pray individually. We can also pray in corporate. That's why we have our personal prayers and we also have corporate prayers. He's teaching us that when we are on our own, we can go before God in prayer and speak to him and have a conversation with him. He's teaching us that we should have a personal relationship with God. Our prayer starts by having a personal relationship with our Father. We know him. He has called us. He has saved us. Through salvation, we can tell him that indeed we are his children. That father-son relation, that we have a personal relationship with him. Then corporately we can come and pray. That's why he's telling them that where two or three are gathered, he'll be amidst them. He also says that whatever you agree on earth, that it will be done even in heaven. He's telling us that we ought not only to pray individually, but we also need to pray corporately. But how can we pray corporately if we do not love one another? Remember, God is love. As we think about prayer, there's no way we can pray, we can talk to God if we don't have heart, love in our hearts, if we don't love God, if we don't love one another, if we don't even love ourselves. It starts by love. That's why we are reminded that if we have anything against our brother, we need first to go and solve our issues. The same way we bring sacrifices before God. Remember, a prayer, we are also going before God. Do not go before God when you have grudges with a people. Do not go before God when you have heart hatred in your heart. He also reminds us in that prayer, how do you expect God to forgive you of your sins when you have not forgiven others of their wrongdoings? It's about our attitude. Our attitude before God. Our attitude before others. Our attitude toward other, other people may make our prayers not be answered. They may make our prayers to be in vain. As we pray in this Lenten season, how is your attitude towards God, towards others? Are you praying prayers that can be heard by God because your attitude is right before men and before God? Have you searched in your heart and known that indeed you have repented of your sins and also forgiven those who have wronged you so that your Father may also forgive you and hear your prayers? It is, it is about us. Jesus reminds us that our prayers should be centered on God, but it starts with our attitude. How our mind is, our heart, we ought to be right with God before we go before him. We ought to be right with one another before we come together to do our corporate prayers. It all starts with looking at ourselves, examining ourselves, asking God to cleanse us, to consecrate us. That's why we started the four days of our Lenten season, asking God to consecrate us. As we learn, as we ask God, teach us how to pray. He's reminding us. Jesus Christ is telling us, first, make sure that the motive is right, that your attitude is right before God and before men. He's reminding us that as you go before God, remember that God is the creator. He is your father. Go before him know the right thing to say and the right time to say them. Go to your father in fear because we know that he is our father. We are not of the same level. Go before him and just tell him, teach us how to pray. Teach me how to pray. May the words that I will be saying be right before you because we know 
God has given us a model. Let us adore him. Let us thank God. Let us repent of our sins. Let our, let our requests and petitions be made to him. But most importantly, let us make sure that we yield towards God's will. As we pray, ask God to teach you how to pray. Ask God to teach you the right way to pray. The Holy Spirit will teach us. The Holy Spirit will guide us that we may not pray in vain, that we may not fast in vain, that we may not spend a lot of time asking God for things that are not worth, that are not worth before him, things that are of earthly, the earthly things, the secondary things, and we miss out asking the primary thing, that our relationship may be good with him, that we may praise him, that we may worship him, that we may adore him, because that is what should be primary when we come before God in prayers. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.